Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to do an inclined plane problem. With this problem, we will be able to draw a free body diagram, solve for different variables, and create a net force equation for both the x and y axes. We have an object of mass 10 kilograms and it is on a 30 degree incline. For the following, I would like for you to determine the net force equation for x and y axes, acceleration along the x and y axis, and the normal force. So take the time, copy this down, pause the video, and draw a quick little sketch of the diagram below. Alright, to start us off, we will be able to label the direction of the normal force and the weight or the mass highest gravity force. Okay. Now, normal force always goes perpendicular to the surface, and weight always goes directly down. And so we have normal vo force here, and it is perpendicular to the surface. And we have weight, which is going to go straight down. After that, we are going to choose a coordinate system with both x in the same or opposite direction of the acceleration and y that is perpendicular to the x. Basically, just create an x and y axis. Just now notice how it is tilted. It is tilted because the object itself is on a incline. I'm going to put back the normal force and the weight force and it lines up with the y axis very well. However, the weight force does not line up at all. In order to solve for that, we will break the weight force into its x and y components. So the angle of the incline will always be the angle right there that the weight and the vertical axis makes. So we can replace the force of gravity with its x and y components. We have mg cosine theta, which goes straight down, that will be the y, and the mg sine theta, which is going to come across the x. I represented mg cosine theta with the blue arrow, and mg sine theta with the red arrow. The reason why the y-axis now uses cosine instead of sine, which we're used to, is because the y gravity force here, the blue one, is adjacent to this angle. And whenever we have a adjacent side, we have to use cosine. And the reason why this force vector, sine theta, even though it's along the x-axis, is because it's opposite of this angle. So, with that, we can use Newton's second law for both the x and y directions. If you take a look here, this symbol right there, sigma, represents summation, or all the forces added up along the x-axis. It's equal to ma. Um, F is equal to ma is Newton's second law. Now, if we take a look, it says that force is equal to mass times acceleration and that is along the negative mg sine theta and we got negative mg sine theta because if we take a look here where the x mg vector is located we see that it's going to the left and anything going to the left we will represent as being negative unless otherwise notice. For the sum of the y forces, we have F is equal to ma. We have force along the y-axis here, and that's the normal force. And because it's going up, we will write that as positive F of n. And we have a force going down. And because it's going down, we're going to represent that as a negative and we determine that to be negative mg cosine of theta. Now, this object, when it is sliding down the ramp, it is not moving along the y-axis, meaning it's not like attached to a spring, or it doesn't have rockets, so it's not going to shoot off. So we know that it does not move along the y-axis, because it doesn't move along the y-axis, 
we know that all the forces will cancel out. Okay, now in order to write the net force along the x and y axis, we had to write the summation or sigma f of x is equal to and see what all those forces were. For our x, the only force that we have going in the x-axis is mg sine theta. However, for y, we have two forces. We have f of n, and we have mg cosine theta. And that is how you write the net force equation for x and y axes. In order to calculate the acceleration along the x-axis, you get the net force equation for that axis, so in our case here we have the net force along the x-axis which is summation of f of x is equal to negative mg sine theta and then we know that f is equal to ma according to Newton's second law so I just replaced force here with mass times acceleration is equal to negative mg sine theta Okay we want to solve for acceleration alone in order to do that we need to isolate that variable so I did that by dividing both sides by the mass and when we do that we get acceleration in the x direction is equal to negative g sine theta and then I plug in the variables that were given to me theta was 30 and we know that g is 9.8 and we learned that the a sub x is going to be moving negative 4.899 meters per second squared. Now, if we want to determine the acceleration along the y-axis, we do the same thing. We take the net equation for the y-axis, so the net force equation along the y-axis, okay, and then we have to plug in the variables. We know that the summation of forces along the y-axis is zero because it's not going to be moving in an upward or a downward direction. So ma is equal to zero, divide both sides by m, and we learn that a sub y is equal to zero. And this answer should make sense because the object doesn't move about the y-axis. It doesn't go into the incline or it doesn't jump off of the incline. Now, However, we can use the net for y force equation to determine the normal force. So what we have here is the net force equation for the y-axis, and I want to solve for this force here, f of n. We know that f of y is equal to 0 because it doesn't go up or down, and then we're going to put that 0 in for f of y is equal to f of n minus mg cosine theta. Um, I'm going to move my f of n, the variable I'm solving for, over to the left side. So we get negative f of n is equal to minus mg cosine theta. And I'm going to get rid of my negative sign on both sides to get my normal force is equal to mass times gravity times cosine of theta. And all I have to do at that point is plug in my variables to get an answer. Okay. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen.